So yep. I think it's important for them to really plan ahead early on and really think through what their budgets are. You know, we talk about families always um, going on to the websites of any schools they're interested. Maybe a college coach has called you and you start to go, all right, I need to go in onto the website and look at the NPC, the net price calculator. Mm -hmm. And what's going to be on there is going to be able to show you what it's kind of an estimate to try and see where you kind of land in terms yeah. of, of information. Now, the reality is some families think, oh, I really go to this school. And I'm like, well, that school starts at $80,000 a year. You know, some people drive Hondas and Toyotas and some people drive major sports cars. Mm -hmm. And you and your family need to be able to have those conversations before your child falls in love with a college, falls in love with a coach or their team, their culture, mm -hmm. and really think through what it costs to go to a school and not expect that they're going to be on a full ride for athletics. Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180. And today we're going to be interviewing Renee Lopez. She is the author of Looking for a Full Ride. Um, so Renee, um, thanks for being here, first thanks of all. Thanks so much it's for having awesome. me. So just to give you a little uh, backstory, Renee and I just met at a, um, at a conference, at a kind of a mastermind. and. Uh, she told me what she did as a former college athlete, as somebody who really uh, loves the college planning process. I was like, you know what? Like I talk about financial education all the time. Uh, she's very niche down and very specific in, in what she does in the area that she focuses. But what she does, she is the best of the best at what she does. So I figured, what the heck? Let's get her on here. Let's talk about this and go from there. So this book, Looking for a Full Ride, um, talk to me about like what inspired you to write this thing. Wow. Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is I had been a college coach for 14 years okay. and what I was a D1 head coach, D2 head coach, but also been a high school head coach. And so I kind of knew the different perspectives from being a college athlete, mm. being a college coach, but also being a high school coach and realizing a lot of families have not been educated on what the college recruiting process is. <laughs> That's so true. Let alone how to make sure you get an athletic scholarship, yeah. what to do in terms of make sure you're eligible. Mm -hmm. And so I really decided to find a bridge to help these families. And cool. it came out of, it's really funny, it came out of a really com a conversation with a couple of coaching friends of mine uh -huh. who jokingly said, you know what, uh, you know so much about this, why don't you write a book on that? Uh, I laughed, I walked sounds away. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> Two and a half years <laughs> later, here's what we have. So totally. we actually interviewed 65 college coaches, athletic directors That's across amazing. 19 different sports. And it's been really a great uh, tool to be able to help as many families as we can and really understand the process of being able to even find a roster spot, but also achieve getting the opportunity to have athletic scholarships offered. That's amazing. So so we talk about, I mean, that, that segment of people, uh, parents, families, kids, whatever, that are like really thinking they can get a full ride. I mean, because looking for a full ride, that's a pretty bold statement, right? Mm -hmm. So looking for doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get, <laughs> right? Like, so talk to, talk to me about that. You know, absolutely is really true is we uh, went through this whole process, especially when my publisher was a conversation of a lot of kids are looking for it. Families mm -hmm. are looking for it. Moms mm -hmm. and dads especially are looking uh -huh. for it because it may not may not have saved for college or things like sure. that. But the fact is many student athletes do not go on a full ride. And for a sure. lot of people have that misconception mm -hmm. out there that they're going to be uh, able to get a full ride automatically just because they're talented. They think yeah. that if they are just good, that they don't have to do anything. They'll just sit back. You know, we watch a movie like The Blind Side. Great movie. Amazing. Yes. But Fantastic. not realistic of how the college recruiting oh, process goes for most student now. athletes. <laughs> so the yeah. fact is, is that, you know, when we look at student athletes, they have to learn to understand, you know, what the steps are, even just to be able to get a roster spot. And, yeah. you know, maybe it's just walking on and, and being a non uh, scholarship athlete or versus actually what it looks like to even get a partial scholarship or even a full ride. So I think it's important for families to know and understand that only a few small percentage of student athletes who go on to be a college athlete yeah. actually are on full rides. That is a really small percentage. So however, so correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm going to ask this in a question because I don't know the answer, but I, I kind of feel like my intuition is is on spot. So. You get an athlete who, um, you know, there are, I think a lot of people think of like the big sports like football, baseball, basketball, stuff like that. But then there are all these other sports, volleyball, track and field, golf. Actually, my wife and I discovered that like, golf is like the easiest sport to get a scholarship for for kids, which is, you know, as we're, we have our kids that are at 11, 8, and 4, we're like going through <laughs> figuring out, all right, you what, got a little bit of time. what are we investing in for our kids to play for sports to train them to get college scholarships, right? Because it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially, right? Sure. And so, 
So, but if you're in these other sports, like I was a track athlete, like, and, and granted I, you know, was at the top of the game and I got full offers and all that stuff, which was fantastic, but most people that's not the case. And if you are going through that, the way that I look at it is even if you don't get a full ride, it's kind of like just an extra thing on the resume that's gonna help you. Even if you don't get an athletic scholarship, there's all sorts of other grants and awards and things mm -hmm. that schools will give you if you find the right schools that are the right fit. That's just an additional like amazing component of the resume. So mm -hmm. you may not get a college, an athletic scholarship, right. but there's other ways that they kind of work you in. You know, absolutely. You know, I think it's really important that we realize that majority of student athletes are actually trying to stack scholarships. A lot of yeah. colleges do that, where mm -hmm. they will stack academic scholarships, yeah. like you mentioned, grants, and maybe there's state grants, maybe there's also uh, financial aid that would happen. You know, we're coming up on yeah. October 1st yeah. here. So those seniors can start filing their FAFSA. You yeah. know, I know I know, families don't always enjoy that, but they're actually making it easier than what it was when, when you and I oh were back gosh, in school. <laughs> it's actually been much more simplified and which is really exciting. So That's October cool. 1st, families can start doing that. And what you're doing is applying for grants and such, as well as loans you know, you can have too mm -hmm. that you may qualify for through the government, but also through state funds. And you take those that numbers and colleges actually plug those numbers into their financial aid packages and most student athletes are actually stacked academics plus athletic scholarships hmm. to make a great financial package and so you know when we're talking about student athletes I think it's really important that we always talk about finding that right fit you mentioned totally, it totally. you're trying to find an academic fit first and foremost you know a lot yeah. of people say oh well here I'm a student athlete I'm gonna go to this college I'm like sure. but what about that first word student athlete yeah, yeah you know have you found the right fit academically have you found the right fit athletically but obviously there's other parts of socially you know what parts in terms of the size of the school the location, you know, the we're, culture we're <laughs> at the school, like it's a big deal. I remember I'm from the Northeast and I went down and toured LSU and I was like, uh, uh, no, I mean, like, I world. love it. I love, I mean, it was awesome, but I'm like, I could not live there. It yes. was like, it's, you know, absolutely. You know, kind of I grew up in the Midwest. I played in, yeah. in college as well in the Midwest. And then, you know, I did my master's. I was on staff at the University of Florida as a That's grad awesome. assistant being part of their program. And, you know, so go Gators yeah, yeah. on that. But, you know, That's I think awesome. it's important to, you know, have that perspective that most student athletes are not on full rides. They're looking for right. that academic fit, the athletic fit. Mm -hmm the social fit, but the financial fit as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we look at that, I refer to it as the broken leg test. And okay. if you're gonna break your leg or tear your ACL or insert whatever, you know, shoulder yeah, surgery, yeah. Is, bad. was it a right fit for you overall? And so would you still stay at that college if you know things didn't pan out for you athletically? Yeah. I think that's a really important part of this process. And so we're really looking to find that natural fit that is a right fit for them that has everything beyond athletics as well and, and finding that you know maybe weather as well you know totally. um, you know here in yeah, florida yeah. preseason in florida is a little different than preseason in colorado you yeah know? that is true that <laughs> so is true be able to perspe put that all perspective i think in terms of managing it all so when it when it comes to when it comes to like preparing for school financially right like mm -hmm. the parents have to start thinking about this early i mean yes. they have the, all these financial stuff all, uh, that you look through like two year look backs, like getting all your assets alignment because how they look at all these different assets play into it. Mm -hmm. And so how much do you cover, if at all, looking at like financial design, structure, assets, preparing for that ahead of time, combining that with the athletic component? Because mm -hmm. like, let's face it, if you got all your money in a 529 account, <laughs> <laughs> right? You're kind of shooting yourself in the foot in sure. some ways. Sure. Or at least that's my opinion. Sure. I, we haven't even talked about this. So like, I'd be, I shouldn't even say that. I guess I should sure. hear. You know, I think it's obviously a, a lot of people think that, you know, college is going to, if, if I put them on the right path athletically, you yeah, mentioned that, yeah, you know, yeah. whether it's golf or whatever, yeah. maybe that then they're going to get a full ride. Yeah. And the reality is I don't want families to plan that way for athletics. You know, the reality is you can take it's all not, the money you spend in traveling and all these sports yeah. and invest it in some sort of, you know, uh, financial plan and probably yeah. do better than in such you know. versus the percentages, you know, because in some sports, it's only 2% of families will receive an athletic scholarship, yep. let alone if that's a full ride. So yep. I think it's important for them to really plan ahead early on and really think through what their budgets are. You know, we talk about families always um, going on to the websites of any schools they're interested. Maybe a college coach has called you and you start to go, all right, I need to go in onto the website and look at the NPC, the net price calculator. Mm -hmm. And what's gonna be on there is gonna be able to show you what, it's kind of an estimate to try and see where you kind of land in terms yeah. of, of information. Now the reality is some families think, oh, I really go to this school and I'm like, well, 
that school starts uh, at $80,000 a year. You know, some uh, people drive Hondas and Toyotas and some people drive major sports cars. Mm -hmm. And you and your family need to be able to have those conversations before your child falls in love with a college, falls in love with a coach or their team, their culture, mm -hmm. and really think through what it costs to go to a school and not expect that they're gonna be on a full ride for athletics. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So so what what else in here? I mean, because I haven't full transparency, I haven't read the book, I'm going to, because it's just fascinating. But what what have we not covered that you think is like, like if you had to give a family that's looking to prepare one, two, three tips of the mm -hmm. most important things, your kids hit in high school, you think they have a gift in some way, shape or form mm -hmm. athletically, what are the things that they need to do freshman year mm -hmm. to start preparing? You know, I think the big thing is the common misconception that is out there is that if you're talented, then then the college girls are just gonna find you. Huh. And reality is they need to actually be proactive in sending emails to college coaches, getting film, make sure that Marketing. they're following those coaches on social media, market yourself. People always say, but I don't play on this great team or I don't play on this level in terms of, you know, in soccer, it's I don't play on the MLS level, yeah, next yeah. levels, or, or I don't play GA or DA. And, yeah. and the fact is you don't have to play on any of those um, levels necessarily in order to find opportunities. What you do need to do is market yourself and be yep. able to understand what to do. And that means your social media needs to be clean. That's really key and important. Kids. All of you student athletes, knowing, understand that. But people say, well, then I'll just won't do social media. I'm like, no, wait a minute. That's a fishing line you want to put out there yeah, to yeah. college coaches because they may find you on Twitter just or Instagram. Use it the right way. Yes, right? like absolutely. Just don't jack it up and do <laughs> stupid stuff. And we have a whole chapter on that you to do. cover it as Amazing. well, too. Amazing. But you know, we also cover about what are college coaches looking for when you send an email? What are they looking for in film? What are they looking for in follow up? Yeah. And understanding campus visits, you yeah. know, what does that all look like? And so we walk through that. One of the things that we actually give away on our website for free, okay. free special report okay. for your viewers, cool. is special report strategies to emailing a college coach. What uh, should you put in an email? Uh, okay. And you can actually find you got, that like, a template yeah uh, we do a little information okay. there so you can nice. go to rlopezcoaching.com and it will pop up for you get a special report and it's going to give you a ton of information including information about the eligibility center which many people don't realize oh, yeah. that's important yeah, yeah. as well as what to be uh you know including in contacting the coaches and what are they looking for and what are they not looking for you because oftentimes we overkill those emails with stats look at how oh, great totally. a stats and i'm like totally but if you were playing five-year-olds, you would have great stats. If I played against the U.S. Women's National Team, I wouldn't have Not so great stats. So yeah, I'd yeah. be excited I was just still yeah. standing after five Gotta minutes. Have context, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I think the thing key is, is that we need to make sure that we're working through the process in teaching kids what to do, how to market themselves properly. And that's what this book is all about. Love it. 65 college coaches across all different divisions, across 19 different sports. And we really wanted to make sure that we had not only junior colleges, but you know, we have people like the University of Alabama, University of Florida athletic yeah. directors speaking into what things are beyond the X's and O's that college coaches are looking for as well. Not just X's and O's, but mm. what are they looking for in terms of your community service? What are they looking for in terms of how you're a team player? Build and, the whole profile absolutely. of the student, of the human being. Absolutely. Right? Like, and that, absolutely. that's an amazing thing. And that's where social media can be an extremely powerful thing. Like look awesome. at, I always tell people, look at social media as being a, cons uh, a producer, not a consumer. Like Absolutely. go on there looking at yourself as a product that you're trying to sell and utilize social media to basically package your product. Absolutely. Right? And that's really what we do is we try yep. and teach kids how you market yourself. It's yep. not about what team you're on, but it's yep. about how you market yourself. Yep. And that's the old, uh, overall idea of this. And yep. one of the things that we actually do is we actually have a follow up for parents and coaches. Oh, that's awesome. And it is a Facebook group that I run. It has 88,000 families in it. That's yes. Yes, you heard that. It's huge. Group. It's crazy. I love it. Um, I love it. You know, but it's for parents and coaches and school counselors, anyone who's associated with Amazing. mentoring student athletes. And we also have a team of experts in there. Not only myself, I answer questions okay. every single day, but also we have ACT and SAT test prep people. Nice. How do you find those other scholarships? How do you find the local Kiwanis scholarship or uh, the local, yeah. hey, I want to go into engineering. How do you find some of those programs? That's and amazing. you know, we have a team of experts in there and it's completely for free. And it's called um, Educating Parents on, of High School Student Athletes on the college recruiting process. And you'll find us, oh. we have 88,000 people on there, so you can definitely wow. find us, that, put a link out there for you phenomenal. guys too. So what I'll do is I'll get those links from you. Mm -hmm. I'll put them in the description below. So if you're watching this, just go down in the description of the YouTube video, check it out. Um, and all the links will be there. 
How do people get this book? I'm sure I could put a link below, but like, talk to me about it. Absolutely. So it is called Looking for a Full Ride. You can go to lookingforafullride.com and we will give you guys information and we'll set up a um, special uh, discount for your viewers too. Amazing. So if they want to, it'll be for a limited time only though. So Perfect. we'll get that all squared away um, okay. and for you guys. But again, it's Looking for a Full Ride, an insider's recruiting guide, and you can find us Amazing. just through lookingforafullride.com. All right. Well, fantastic. So. Guys, if you have any questions about anything, comment in the comment section below. Um, you know, and, and I'll do my best to, you know, just connect you, answer anything I can answer, point you to Renee if need be. Um, she'll be watching the video too, so I'm sure she'll be looking through and seeing the comments and all that stuff Absolutely. as well. Um, but I'll also put her all of her links and contact info and everything that she wants to be able to provide down below. So if this is something that you want to learn about, um, I would say the best time to get started is now. If you're thinking about it, it's Absolutely. probably close to already like you need to get on it. Absolutely. Right? Like that's unfortunately the way this stuff happens. Like, Absolutely. Uh, so that is that is that. Anything else we need to cover? Or I think, we, yeah, I think I, we're good. That was great. That's you know, amazing. I think uh, we also have 40 blogs for free at rlopezcoaching.com. So you can find out a All ton of information you need. For All right. Sure. So that's a plethora of stuff. Your one-stop shop for everything for trying to get your kid a full ride. Good luck. That's, you know, it's a lot of work. I know it. <laughs> I got three kids of my own that I'm getting ready to do this for too. So, uh, till next video, have a blessed, inspirational day. Thanks for being here. Thank you so All much right. for having me. See you guys.